Hello and welcome to the Wolfenhaus YouTube show. Uh, my name is Fraser. I'll be your guide through history's dark and twisted alleyways. And today I'm going to be reading you a story about the Radium Girls. Now, if you haven't heard of the Radium Girls before, uh, it's essentially back in the day before safety was invented, essentially. People really thought that you could survive anything. Everyone was Superman. This was also around the time that Superman was invented, actually, as a concept. So, uh, here goes the Radium Girls. Everyone knows that radiation is bad for you. It really is. It sort of turns your uh, DNA into spaghetti. Sticking your head in a microwave is likely to cause death. Licking uranium is probably going to do the same thing. This hasn't always been common knowledge though. In the early 20th century, shortly after radium's discovery, people were obsessed with this stuff. Couple that with the watchmaking industry, which in itself has always seemed a little broken to me, people pay the equivalent of a poor household's annual income for a simple timepiece. And yes, they are simple. Come at me in the comments if you're a watch head, a ticker, the miracle of radium. Put it in everything. Marie Curie may have discovered radioactivity and radium, but she never fully understood it. Her application of radium in medical situations led the public to believe it to be a miracle. Because of course, suddenly you could see through someone to see which bone was broken and you know, science just loved it. So people thought, hey, radium's great. Let's put it in everything. Let's put it in chocolate. Radium proved useful in treating cancer. The disease had never been challenged successfully, so the populace accepted radium with open arms. It was a cure-all. Just imagine a problem and see it disappear in the face of radium soothing rays. It's radioactive. Watches weren't the only thing containing radium. Up until 1936, the Hippenbach Bakery produced radium bread. If bread wasn't your thing, you could ingest the life-given glow in the form of chocolate. There it is. Past me new. British chemists later named this the suicide chocolate because, you know, radioactivity will kill you. Radium water was made by storing water in jugs laced with the radioactive material. This was believed to cure nearly everything from wrinkles to failure to perform in bed. The directions recommended drinking six glasses of the irradiated water daily. Imagine that, you're having some marital issues and you think, I'm going to turn this into a nuclear-powered submarine. People were looking for that radium glow. So they added radium to their cosmetics. Dr. Alfred Curie, who was a real medical doctor and no relation of Marie Curie. Also, I'm pretty sure if he's in this article, he's nowhere near as uh, impressive and mor morally good as Marie Curie. So Dr. Alfred Curie released a cosmetics range called Thoradia in, Pari in Paris. Paris? In 1933. His products included radium and thorium, another particularly radioactive element. Their flagship product was the Thoradia cream. According to Dr. Alfred Curie, the cream firmed the skin, removed wrinkles, and degreased and even improved circulation. It would do one of those things though. It would probably remove wrinkles because when you're dead, your skin falls off entirely. So it technically it's not wrinkled anymore, is it? Faux radia relented in 1937 when French regulations forced them to remove radium and thorium from their products. The company lingered until the 60s, their products no longer containing any radioactive material. What did they even call it? Because it's got thor for thorium and radia for radium. So what was it just? Aqueous cream. It probably was, to be honest. If you're looking for good skincare, just use plain aqueous cream. You know, just hydrate your skin. You don't need urea, although that's probably in aqueous cream. Do you know what urea is? It's harvested from urine. That's for another article, isn't it? 
Radium was used in so many other products and services, suppositories, impotence treatments, spas, and almost everything you can imagine. Soldiers need watches, women need jobs. It's important to remember that corporate exploitation has never not happened. Since the first corporation, people have been exploiting each other for one person to climb that little ladder and get to the top. During the First World War, frontline soldiers had a problem. I mean, they probably had many problems, let's be honest. Trench foot. You know what trench foot is? Your foot rots off from the water. Trenches were too dark for them to be able to see the dials on their watches. What a problem. How were they supposed to know when it was time for their suicidal charge into no man's land? Something had to be done. The Radium Luminous Material Corporation invented a paint called Undark. Uh, apparently radium doesn't make you very creative. The paint contained large amounts of the glow-in-the-dark element we call radium. Soon factories were set up to produce watches with undark dials. Women were hired to work in these factories for two reasons, largely because there were not many men left, but also because their hands were smaller raccoon-like so they can get into the watch get in there in the dials i suspect there was also the element of the employers caring less about the well-being of female employees that is actually i mean if we think about it they may have known that radium was bad but they also liked the little hats also if you think that radium is good Leave a comment about that because you're wrong and I'm going to fight you in the comments. I'm not really going to fight you. That would be, I'm getting distracted. The Undar came as a powder which was mixed with water to make paint. Due to the fine nature of the work, the painters were instructed to point their brushes using their lips and tongues. Their employers explicitly told them the paint was safe for consumption. In fact, it's good for you. Never mind the weird numb feeling you're getting from it. Undark powder would get everywhere. The women were soon dubbed ghost girls because their hair, clothes, skin and teeth glowed in the dark. Believing the lie, the factory workers leaned into the ghost girl image. They would go so far as to paint their teeth and coat their faces in the stuff before going out dancing after work. And then there's a picture of radium jaw, uh, which I'm not even sure if I can put it in this video for you to see because it is truly horrific. And I don't want to get demonetized before I get monetized. Is that even possible? The first radium girl, as the victims of this predatory business model were known, was Amelia Magia. She developed a toothache, which called for the removal of the tooth. The tooth's neighbor had to be removed as well. Both teeth were replaced by ulcers that oozed blood and pus. Magia soon found that all of her teeth were rotting away. Her condition deteriorated to such an extent where her entire lower jaw had to be removed due to the rotting. She died in 1922 after the rotting spread to other parts of her body, causing a massive hemorrhage that finally led to her demise. Doctors, in classic 1920s fashion, assumed that she merely had a bad case of syphilis. Following Magia's death, a lot of other radium girls developed the condition that would later become known as radium jaw. Their employer denied any connection between the string of agonizing employee deaths and their business practice. The end of the radium girls. After two years of denials and a significant downturn in profits, the Radium Luminous Material Company commissioned an independent study. That study immediately found that the woman had died of radium poisoning. Because at that point, they knew about this. I mean, Marie Curie died of her exposure to radium. They figured out it was dangerous immediately. The Radium Luminous Material Company publicly denied the results, because of course they did. Blaming the Radium Girls for so selfishly dying while employed at their factories. Have they no shame? They were just dirty or something. Soon, the company issued several studies that found Radium to be perfectly safe. You know companies still do this, right? 
like cigarette companies used to do studies that said that cigarettes were safe and they would pay off people to do studies that uh, the study was about to find that, you know, cigarettes were unsafe. We get the same thing with all kinds of things from soda to, you know, all kinds of supplements and chemicals and anything that's a fad is bad for you. Harrison Martland, a pathologist, developed a test in 1925 that conclusively proved the radium was destroying the woman from the inside out. The Radium Luminous Material Company tried to discredit Dr. Martland. The radium girls knew that they were all dying. Many of them already had radium jaw, which made complaining about their employers very difficult. They hired an attorney, Raymond Berry, and took the Radium Luminous Material Company to court. The radium girls were forced to accept an out-of-court settlement, allowing the Radium Luminous Material Company, now known as the United States Radium Corporation, to publicly deny any wrongdoing. Eleven years would pass before Catherine Wolf Donahue was able to put an end to the practice. She herself was a radium girl. She was dying of radium poisoning when she took the radium dial company to court. She won, ending the practice that claimed hundreds of lives over the course of 13 years. And let's remember, they knew that this radium paint was killing factory workers. Like, from the first year, they knew this. But they kept it going for 13 terrible years. The case led to reforms. It was one of the first times that a company was held responsible for the health and safety of their employees. Unfortunately, these regulations are often ignored by modern mega corporations. Hey, hey! The true legacy of the Radium Girls is that we, as the public, are now aware of how eager corporations are to work us to death. And that's the story of the Radium Girls. So, basically, nothing has changed since the 1920s. Corporations are still working us to death. And if you just pay attention to what's happening in these mega factories and centers of hypothetical fulfilling of one's needs. Uh, yeah, so what do you think about the Radium Girls? Do you think that Radium Jaw was just them, you know, faking it? Or do you want undark watches back? I'm sure eventually your wrist will fall off as well. Was it worth it so that soldiers could see what the time was while they were sitting knee deep in the effluvia of their um, comrades in the trenches? Uh, yeah, so let me know. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Send it to your grandmother. I'm sure by now she has subscribed and then she can send it to all of her friends because we're really trying to hit that boomer market. That's where we're going. Uh, but also if you can get me into just any other market, that's also great. I just for some reason always want videos sent to grandmas. I wonder if that says something about me as a person. No. All right, guys, so that's been the Wolfnast Show. You can check the comments down below if you want the link to the article. We've got all the pictures in there, stuff we can't put on YouTube. Also, uh, you can check out any of the other, other articles. If you want to see one of our stories as a YouTube video, let us know. We'll fast track that one. And until next time, stay smart. Peace.